renewed political arguments which have broken out following yesterday's budget. Labour's attacked the budget as the wrong judgment. With extreme cuts, the Liberal Democrats have put forward their own plans for eliminating the deficit. We're joined now by UKIP Financial Affairs spokesman Stephen Wolfe. Uh, Stephen Wolfe, what did you make of it, first of all? How much of it would you disagree with, or how much of it would you vote in favour of if you were in the Commons? Well, I think there's a great deal that we would consider uh, concerning. Firstly, there was no major package there in, in this budget that actually really dealt with the concerns of the people on debt, and there was only mod modest returns in removing the deficit. And these are going to be the long-term problems of the future. And I think you won't often hear me agreeing with the Labour Party too often, but on this particular occasion, where the Chancellor was talking about the country walking tall, he certainly wasn't looking at the constituencies I, I go around and see where people are struggling to get on their feet during, during the past few years. Uh, what did you think about something like the uh, buy ISA, this idea of helping uh, people get on their, the, the property ladder and save it at the same time? Do you see that as, a, you know, as, a, as an offering to save us? Well, I think it's a gimmick to those young people who are struggling to get on the housing ladder. And what it will do is enable those with wealthy parents to be able to save the money that they would have given them in deposits. And we've already heard from experts who are saying that this would distort the housing market, potentially pushing up prices and putting it out of reach for those people in the future. The key point that he needed to deal with, if he's looking at housing, is to deal with the demand of human beings coming into this country, which is creating the great pressure. And also from that, we've obviously got increasing births and elder elderly people. So it's the demand side he needs to look at. And you were saying you don't think enough's been done. Uh, was it on the deficit or on austerity? Just clarify for us whether you think it's been paid down too harshly or too slowly. Well, I think the key point is he's not really tackling it. The debt has doubled over the period of the time of this, this government. He tries to suggest by using fancy numbers of the GNP uh, and gross domestic product that he's actually halving it, but he hasn't done so in talk. It's really like owning a house and the house prices has risen, but the mortgage is still there. It's very concerning that you have a chancellor is really not tackling the debt. Uh, in terms of the, the rate of pace that you would go at, then what would you cut? Well, we made significant cuts, we believe, in HS2. That's a folly. We'd certainly be reducing the foreign aid bill by a good nine billion. We'd be removing some of the uh, bodies like the Department of Energy and, and Climate Change. We'd make a, a removal of the European Union, which we said over a period of time would bring in over 10 billion a year. So broadly, so sorry to cut you off, I just want to sort of try and get a sense from, from you know, joining these together then. Um, if, it, if push comes to shove and, and you are asked to help support a government that is putting forward a budget like this, would it be impossible for you to do that? I don't think it's impossible for us to be able to support a budget, but what we would say is that if you want our support, then you're going to have to look at the debt and the deficit much more strongly than you are doing now. And actually, you have to look at issues that you're, you're, you're not doing now and look at people who are suffering in the country. And what, one of those conditions would, would be in relation to the bedroom tax. You have to have more social cohesion and look at the social problems that this, this particular policy is causing. And would you stick to uh, the Nigel Farage line of uh, earlier this week that uh, it was time to end uh, the insistence on equality and diversity when you're hiring people in the workplace? I think what Nigel was there was talking in a broad brush, it's been taken out of uh, some stage of context. What we're looking at, and we will produce this, is the smaller levels of employment law that actually put a burden on those particular employers who might want to take some people who are already living here or have a right to, to work here, a British passport or otherwise, that they might want to consider employing when they're long-term unemployed rather than saying, I have to take someone from Eastern Europe in, 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 as an option. And that's really where Nigel's talking about. It's not a wholesale removal of all the, all the legislation. That won't happen. Stephen Wolfe uh, from UKIP, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.